the past couple of years have thrown the traditional 9 to 5 work routine for a loop. So why 9 to 5 is outdated in today's world? Thanks to the pandemic, remote work has become the new norm and let me tell you, it's been a game changer. What used to be a stigma surrounding working from home has now been replaced by a newfound appreciation for its flexibility and freedom from both the employees and business leaders alike. And can you blame them? With the daily grind of long commutes and crowded trains a thing of the past, folks have discovered a whole new world of productivity and balance. Suddenly, they are knocking out tasks left and right, all while enjoying more time with their families and actually having a life outside of work. It's like hitting the jackpot of work-life balance. It's a topsy-turvy world out there, isn't it? Companies are waving the pink slip while simultaneously scratching their heads over the talent shortage. Meanwhile, some folks are pulling a juggling act, working multiple full-time gigs just to make ends meet. And let's not forget about those poor souls putting in hours of unpaid overtime, feeling like they're stuck in a never-ending loop. And then there's the gig economy, gobbling up whole chunks of the workforce like a hungry monster. It's wild, with folks hopping from gig to gig, trying to piece together a living in an ever-changing landscape. It's enough to make your head spin, isn't it? But amidst all this chaos, there's one thing that's crystal clear. The traditional work model ain't cutting it anymore. We're living in a world where flexibility is king and folks are getting creative with how they make a living and the people with 95 are getting left behind. Back in the 1800s, American labor unions came up with a 95 grind and quickly became the norm over a century. But then most folks were clocking in at big factories and warehouses and this structured schedule was revolutionary. But Fast forward to today and it's clear that shoehorning every modern job into this old school model is causing more problems than it solves. Take the staggering statistics that 8.4 million people in the US are juggling multiple jobs, yet they're hustling to make ends meet. It's a phenomenon dubbed overemployment, where folks are squeezing in extra shifts just to cover basic expenses like rent and groceries, a non-stop grind. And a recent report by McKenzie found that a whopping two-thirds of the average person's wealth comes from their ability to trade time, effort and experience for cold, hard cash. That's right, your skills are worth more than all your other assets combined. But while the traditional 95 setup has been a lifeline for billions, offering a steady paycheck and a shot at climbing the career ladder, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. In fact, trying to force every job into this rigid model is backfiring big time. It's causing headaches for both employees and companies alike, leading to three equally troubling trends in the job market. It's time to rethink how we work and embrace a more flexible approach that works for everyone. Let's talk about how the 95 grid is making time a worthless commodity. Back in the day, Henry Ford was a trailblazer in adopting the 40-hour work week, aiming to attract top talent without breaking the bank. His strategy worked like a charm, setting a new standard that other companies had to follow to keep their best workers from jumping ship. But here's the thing, while this setup made sense for assembly line workers cranking out cars, it's a whole different story in today's modern office. Your typical office job isn't a predictable assembly line style gig. Some days you're swarmed with work, other days you're twiddling your thumbs, pretending to look busy. And it's not just manufacturing jobs anymore. Most of us are in the service sector where tasks ebb and flow with customer demands. Yet, despite the vastly different nature of these jobs, the corporate world insists on squeezing them all into the same 9 to 5 mold. The result? Employees are stuck in a never-ending cycle of unpaid overtime, expected to put in extra hours to meet unrealistic demands. According to a study, the average office professional clocks in a whopping 99.2 hours of overtime per week. Basically, a whole extra day of work. But here's where it gets really absurd. Even when there's nothing to do, workers are still expected to punch in those 40 hours, filling the void with meaningless tasks just to look busy. It's a lose-lose situation for both the employees and companies alike. The rise of gig work and freelance jobs has been nothing short of staggering. According to data from the US Census Bureau, McKenzie & Company, and compiled by Statista, these alternative work arrangements have outpaced traditional permanent jobs by a whopping 500% over the last decade. Gig work apps have become the go-to choice for many unskilled workers, offering a lower barrier to entry and flexible working arrangements. With just a phone and a bike, someone can sign up for food delivery services like Uber Eats, Postmates, DoorDash, Grubhub, and all of them simultaneously in less than an hour. 
This presents a highly appealing alternative to minimum wage jobs that still rely on the acquainted process of submitting resumes and enduring weeks of job interviews, only to end up with an unpredictable schedule and meagre pay. Although gig work often pays poorly, it allows people to work as much or as little as they want whenever they want. Most individuals even juggle gig work alongside a full-time job to earn extra income. Meanwhile, the popularity of freelancing and private contracting has exploded, particularly among skilled workers who can sell their services to businesses without being tied down by ongoing agreements. These workers are paid only for the work they do, whether it's a fixed price for a specific project or hourly for tasks like security or administrative assistance. Healthcare workers in particular have been embracing private contracting, with nurses, doctors and hospital support staff opting for flexible schedules as contractors rather than traditional employees. This shift allows them to prioritize their mental health and work fewer hours. Private contractors typically command higher hourly rates than permanent employees, as businesses only pay for the hours of service they actually need. However, with the demise of the 9-to-5 workday, businesses stand to benefit the most from this shift, even if they have to pay contractors and gig workers slightly more per hour. But the death of the 9-to-5 comes with its drawbacks, especially for workers. As they transition to becoming their own bosses, they are responsible for overhead costs like benefits, pay time off, training, retirement plans, accounting and health insurance. This can be a significant financial burden, particularly when it comes to healthcare, which can eat into their earnings and leave them worse off than if they had stuck with a traditional permanent position. According to a survey conducted by Forbes, small and medium enterprises are increasingly turning to contract workers to streamline their accounting processes and mitigate the rising costs associated with human resource management. This trend isn't limited to smaller companies. Large tech giants like Google have also been embracing contract work since 2018, with contract workers outnumbering direct employees. There are several reasons why companies are gravitating towards contract work. Firstly, top-tier engineers and skilled professionals have realized that they can command higher rates by taking on freelance projects for multiple companies rather than being tied down to a single full-time position. Some of these engineers can earn up to $10,000 an hour for their specialized expertise. For companies like Google, it's more cost-effective to pay these engineers for the specific hours they're needed rather than offering them hefty annual salaries for sporadic projects. Additionally, during economic downturns, like the current one, companies can easily cut expenses by letting go of contract workers without the repercussions associated with large layoffs. This flexibility allows businesses to manage costs without signaling financial distress to investors and employees, contributing to why 9to5 is becoming obsolete. Well, that's it for today. What changes have you noticed in your own work life over the last few years and how do you feel about the shift away from the traditional 9to5 model? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching the video and we'll catch you in the next one.